Hello, good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, yeah, so today I finally got my package in the mail. So I ordered just some leg t-shirts with a pocket on it. Because the idea I have is just paint like more abstract designs on it. I've been working on concepts of like what specific patterns to use and like placement on the actual shirt. So that's what I've been working on on the side. I was just waiting for them to come in the mail, which they came in last night. So I can go ahead and do them today. Um, I will be using the acrylic paint pencil. That way you can get a bit more detail and precision. Um, depending on how um, they show up or they turn out, I might consider doing like actual, like using actual acrylic paint versus the pens because ultimately what I want to do like long term is I really like the concept of like patchworking or re kind of like revamping like vintage clothing I think that trend is really cool right now I would like to do that so yeah after a little intro I can go ahead and get started so I'm gonna change my camera angle so bye face cam so yeah Leaked. <laughs> okay, right there is good. Perfect. So I just have to turn off my ring light. That way it's not too washed out. There we go. It's a little bit better. Cool. So this is a new angle for me. Oh, it's so <laughs> I wish I could keep th that ring light on because like now it's kind of dark, but that's okay. I'd rather it not be super washed out. Okay. So right now, because when you're painting, it's recommended you put like cardboard underneath the fabric. That way your uh, ink doesn't leak through. <sighs> okay. So this is prep for later. Because I bought three shirts, a small, medium, and large, they were men's sizes. And so they did come out a little bit big. Uh oh. Why'd the music stop? Okay, we back, we back. <laughs> Crisis averted. It's weird because, like, it'll just randomly pause. It's kind of sus. Yeah, so I bought a small, medium, and a large, and because I didn't know how well they'd fit. Like, I know my body type is weird, so sometimes it doesn't... Like, I look at the size chart and it doesn't work out sometimes. So, the idea... Another reason why I was doing the sketch cards for, like, throwaway just basic ideas and concepts is so I can kind of work off of the ideas that I worked out before and then implement them into my design. <clears throat> Make sure that's muted. So, I looked through all my um, previous sketchers that I made, and I think these would be really good concepts to work off of. So, I, I set aside like 10, I think. Because going with the pocket design, I think these three would look really nice on a pocket. And then maybe have the same design on the sleeve. And then for something that can go on like a full body. Like these two. Like having this be on the front face of the shirt. And then this just going down like the center across the chest. Horizontally. And then if I ever do long I typically don't wear long sleeve. Mainly because like I run hot, so like I, I usually be wearing tanks or t-shirts. So like something like this or these three, like just along a sleeve, I think would look really cool. So these are the basic concepts that I want to work off of. I think, because today is going to be a test for like just seeing how well the paint, paint pens work. And then once they dry, because what I read online 
was you had to let you have to put them in the dryer once it's fully dry and then wash it after three days that way it, the pay can properly set so i'll do that and then and then depending on how well they do and hold up um i'll probably go because I, I bought these shirts new just to make sure they're clean um i'll probably go to like a second source like a value village or goodwill and then buy shirts from there uh, i was so annoyed because i bought a large medium and a small right but they're men fits so i like tighter fits so the medium fit me well like i like when stuff like fl clings to me a little bit you know i like form fitting stuff but my sister uh she was like 40 pounds less than me <laughs> and she likes lose her fit so i bought the small for her right but she she didn't like how tight it was on her so she wants the medium so i'm like frick i was like i'll give you this one so now i gotta go out and buy some more and then I also got a large because I wasn't sure. The large like fits me better, but it's like a bit too long and a bit too loose. I want to learn how to hem stuff or tailor stuff. I think that'd be really good for me. I've always liked the idea of being able to make my own clothes. And that seems really fun as well. Um, yeah, so the where did I put my pencil? Found it. The concept for today, because all the shirts I got. I'm just doing a quick thumbnail right now. I should write in pen, huh? So we can all see it. Nah, it's right. I can zoom in a little. See so you. So. Let's do a quick thumbnail for the concept. For these pocket shirts is. Because it has a pocket on the left. And it has the hem on the sleeves and collar. So, so the first shirt I want to do is probably do this one on the pocket and then on the collar and sleeves do like red, yellow, or blue. So first, because the shirts I got are black and then gray. So first I will need to... It's weird! <laughs> My camera is flipped. It's upside down for you guys. But... There we go. Right set up for y'all. So I would first have to paint the pocket white and then do my pattern, right? So there's also seams here on the sleeves. So I can either do just a simple fill on the collars and then the sleeves or if I want to be more ambitious, do like the patterns on the sleeve as well. So, because this is the first time I'm trying it out, I'll probably just stick with just doing the pocket and then just the trims. That way, a bit more of a simple aesthetic. And because, th so this first shirt is going to be the medium, right? So this is going to be for my sister. She, I know her personal thing is she likes printed tees. She likes graphic tees a lot. So I think she doesn't wear a lot of colors though. So since the shirt is black, right? I think... Because I, I want her to wear more color. Like, I think she'll look good. Um, so I think just doing the simple pocket collar and trim will be like a stepping stone for her, you know? So that's going to be the first one. That's going to be the medium shirt. So since none of us can fit into the small, I think that one will just be like a practice concept one. So for the small, I don't... I'm planning on doing maybe one shirt a day, depending on how long it takes. So, we'll see. Because I, I want to get these three done before I move on to a different project for streaming. So for the small one, maybe I can try... Try this one. This pattern. So for this one... There we go. I want to do... Oh! Yeah. So... I think I'd want to keep the collar and then the sleeves back black and then do the pattern just across the front face or across the chest of the shirt so that's gonna be the small this one is definitely gonna be a lot more ambitious uh, my only concern with doing paint on the shirts is like the texture because you know when paint dries, it's not going to be soft like the cotton shirts. So before I do like a full face of one, uh, I want to see how they feel in the eternal. So I'll probably do this one last. 
if I'm going to do this concept on the full face of the shirt. And then for the last large, this one is for my dad. I was going to make one for my mom, but she's probably going to finish the medium, so I have to wait till either I order more shirts or if we go to the thrift store and pick some up. Yeah, all the shirts I have today have pockets. Um, looking back, I should have gotten some non-pocket ones. So for this one, he said he wanted grays, whites, and then blacks for the um, pat color pattern. Pretty basic. So I think for this one, I want to try... Because he said he wanted to keep the base black. So I think I will do a pattern on the pocket and then probably do a pattern on the sleeves and then keep the front face and the top collar black because I don't want it to be too outlandish because he's old <laughs> um, I think a good pattern for that one I'm thinking of probably just some circles like overlapping like this nothing too bold Yeah, so probably something like that. And then filling in with like little highlight lines. That way it's not too bold, not too bright. Okay, so those are the three concepts I have so far for these three shirts. So the medium for my sister is going to be this primary color block or this primary color pattern on the pocket. And then just filling in the sleeves for the collar and trim with the primary color. For the small, I'm gonna do last, do the full face with the pattern, keep the sleeves plain and the collar plain. And then the last large, do patterns on the sleeves and pocket, and then keep the collar plain. Oh, go ahead. It started. So I think I want to do this pattern first to see how well the fabric grips the paint. Because I know, because the paint pens are fairly opaque, so the, if you paint over it, most likely it'll be able to have full coverage. <clears throat> so yeah, I just have to be very careful to not spill on my table. I do have paper towels ready to wet my spills if needed. Okay. So, this is on cardboard. <laughs> you can hear the knocking. <laughs> um, this is on cardboard. That way, it won't leak to the back side of the shirt. So I have all my pens ready. I swatched them earlier. Oof. So I have bright red, bright yellow. And then kind of a medium blue, not a light blue, not a dark blue. That way these are all in the same hue. So first I'm going to fill this in with white. Ooh, look at how opaque that is. That looks so nice. Yeah, the fabric is sticking a little bit to the pens. That should be fine. Yeah, I was gonna put a paper in the back of the pocket. That way it doesn't leak too much. Oh. 
Perfect fit. Okay. Yeah, the fabric is absorbing the paint a little bit, so I probably will have to go over with a second coat. Because if enough people like this, or like this style of like custom shirts, I might consider selling them. Just depends on the demand, you know? Like I told myself, if I'm ever going to sell something, I need to have at least 100 people want to buy it. That way it kind of justifies spending the time and getting the supplies to be able to ship stuff out, that type of thing. probably isn't feasible until I gain a large enough audience, but that's okay. Stuff comes with time. Because to me, like, success is part hard work and then also part just luck. Like, you gotta be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, because this is just the first layer. Fabric is definitely picking up a lot of the ink. So for sure we'll need to go over a second time. I also have like the fabric puffy paint. I thought about maybe trying to water them down. That way it's not as clumpy and thick. Cause those will stay on. Like I have a shirt that I made ages ago and it still got the paint on it. Yeah, maybe in the future, for anything that requires large cover, I'll try with base acrylic paint. I can't do it today because I don't. I only have black. I had a bunch of different color, like regular acrylic paint, but then I didn't use it, so I gave it to my mom. And a while ago, because we were putting um, bricks down into our garden, so we painted them, basically using all <laughs> the paints I gave her. <laughs> So if I want to do more of this, I'll probably have to go 
and buy some more just regular acrylic paint. Yeah, see the coverage is pretty good. Let's see how it was the dark the dark gray, but also light gray. So probably in two coats. It'll probably be just about fully opaque white. Okay, so I got the first layer of white on. Fairly okay coverage. Going in for a second layer. Yeah, definitely second coat. Let's get in there. Yeah, when I was painting my room, because my sister and I swapped rooms a month ago, and her rooms were like a 
a light magenta pink. And they've been that way since we were like little. Because my dad was like, oh, girls like pink. I will paint that room pink. And we emptied the room out and then we painted the walls white. Because I personally like a brighter room. Like I really, because this room gets a lot of natural sunlight. So like the white walls definitely keep the room nice and bright. Like I will avoid using the overhead room light if I can. And we're painting. Mind you, this is like house paint, so it's definitely like heavy duty, right? Heavy duty stuff. And I wore paint clothes that I specifically set aside for painting. And <laughs> I didn't care if it got hella paint on it, right? Um, and then we went out, like, right after I changed my clothes into, like, my pajamas to, so, like, throw away clothes, so nothing, like, too important. Like, we went out to go wash the trays, and we were just about washing out our tools in the trays, and then a little bit of the, like, the paint water splashed in my shirt, and I was like, oh. it was a black shirt, so I was like, oh. So there's a big old white stain on the chest of one of my favorite, like, tank tops. And it's just like, sigh. Yeah, for sure areas with larger cover I need to use actual paint. I'm gonna see if we have white paint. So I'll be back in like a minute or two. Okay, I'll be right back. Because doing full coverage with the pens is going to be really annoying. Like I said, my first time using it. So we'll see.
Hey, I am back. I found some paint. It says it's water soluble, so I have to look it up and see if I can use it on fabric. But I found some. And it's the brand that we usually don't buy. So I'm gonna look up real quick to see if I can use it and if it won't wash up fabric. Sorry for the way it took oh, it took me a while to find it. Let's see. Okay, on the bottle, it says, good for screen printing. So, based on that, I assume it would work on a fabric. But... So I think it will be fine <laughs> if I use this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Because this is not gonna cut it for base coverage. I think it should be fine. But we will find out. I just saw an article that said you have to put like a finisher on top of the parts that you painted, that way it doesn't get hard. So I definitely will probably have to try that out. Once this is done. Cause I just looked up information about using fabric um, paint pens. Or sorry, using acrylic paint pens rather than just straight acrylic. So I will have to research that more later.
Yeah, this is getting a lot more coverage. I think I still might need to do another coat on top, though it's fully opaque. So right now it's probably at like a solid 90%. I wonder what it would look like without the previous two layers on. I wonder how opaque it would be. Because ultimately, I want to wear stuff that I want to wear. I think a big inspiration for me, style-wise, I really like uh, Ela Klein's Teddy Fresh brand. I really like how artsy. A lot of stars are outlandish. Not that I wear all of them. I'll, some of them are a bit gaudy for me. But it's still really cool how a lot more, how bold is kind of in right now more artsy stuff like patterns are also really into I was thinking about it this morning, like how cool would it be if I could, depending on how successful these turn out, like just make a boatload of these, be really fun. Also having like something tangible that you make is really cool. Because I have ideas for like launches or products. It's just the matter of there's such an oversaturation on the online market. You have to do something. Either you have to do something really unique that'll stand out, or have a large enough influence to where <laughs> you have stands that'll buy your product. <laughs> um, I know me personally, it doesn't take a lot to impress me. It's also kind of sad because, like, if I get a recommendation recommendation to buy something, I'll probably buy it. Like, I don't mind trying something out, you know? It's also because, like, I don't like to go into things with too high expectations. As well. You know, like, you don't want to let yourself down preemptively. Sounds kind of sad, but low-key true. This is really fun and relaxing though. Anyway, I was thinking earlier, like how cool would it be? Because I know there's a lot of like in independent like boutiques and clothing shops in like downtown, L downtown LA. And it'd be so cool to see just your product on shelves, you know? That That's the goal have a product that's available at like the consumer level that to me is end all be all because if you're at that point then you're pretty probably pretty well off you know it's funny because like you know in school they ask you in like kindergarten and then sixth grade what do you want to be when you grow up like little plebs will say like oh i want to be a fireman or i want to be a princess <laughs> And I was looking back at my kindergarten one, 
and it said an artist or a fashion designer which to me is the funniest thing because i i don't have a lot of sense of style um like i'm not an icon or whatever like looking back at like what i wore in school a lot of it was way too tight pants and shirts mainly because i was too scared to ask my parents for new clothes especially during puberty when you get like fat <laughs> um so I, I always like tighter fits because i don't like i'll sometimes wear like loose and flowy things but sometimes i don't like like the off and on feeling of like something brushes against your legs or your arms sometimes i don't like it I'm gonna grab my paint. I forgot to close my door. I'm gonna close my door real quick. We back, boys. Don't want my parents to hear me talk shit. <laughs> um, like I'm, I'm thinking about, like in my head, like all the logistics of having a shop. No, first having an online shop, and then listing at things. If it's gonna be secondhand items, and you're gonna need to list things individually, like you can't have multiple sizes for the same design. Because if you're using um, used clothing. The size and fits and cuts are going to be different. So you're probably going to list things individually. You have to have a record of item numbers. You have to think the logistics of having an online shop, i.e. setting up a pay system. Think, like I'm thinking of like what type of aesthetic I'd like to have. Any logo branding. Like I th think it's really fun to plan out and think those kind of things. Because right now I'm studying graphic design in school. So just trying to think about how I can implement that into whatever endeavor I do. I'm gonna try grab a larger brush. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I start with this one? So dumb. Small brain. Yeah, and then like the logistics of having like a, a boutique that you wouldn't necessarily be able to list the same items online because you can't really have someone buy it in person and then delete the listing right away. Like what if someone has it available or in their cart online and then someone buys it in store and then they get mad. So you have to have in-store items and then exclusive online items and then you have to have the space to store all those products. And then I'm thinking about like how often would you do drops? Would you do drops like once a month or once a week? You have to think about how many products you want to have in a drop. Like, I was just thinking about all this this morning. Just kind of pre-planning. 
the potential of what this could be if enough people like it. Because the plan is to have my sister wear this one and then her coworkers that she never talks to, <laughs> all the middle aged people that she works with, be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Where'd you get it? And then she'd be like, my sister made it. And they'd be like, oh, that's cool. Does she sell them? And then she'd be like, no. And then she won't talk to them. Like I said, I want to wear stuff that I'd wear. Because I like simple aesthetics with like a little bit more bold patterns or styles. I think everyone has the dream to have some sense of notoriety or some sense of wealth. And there is an aspect of luck and like having the means to gain that for the wealth. But I think there needs to be an element, a skill beyond that, you know? And I think it'd also be cool is if you had like a boutique or an online store, you can have multiple artists contribute and then offer them a portion of the sale. I think it'd be really cool too. That way it has a sense of like collaboration. I can just think about these things. Dreaming, I guess. Then you also have to think about pricing. Because if it takes you two hours to make a product, then ideally you have to pay off that worker. So you have to think about how much would you charge, because you don't want to overcharge. Because you want people to be able to price. You want to be able to be affordable for the normal lower to middle class consumer. Like you don't want to have exclusively set aside for the wealthy, right? Because like, there's people who are buying like a hundred dollars sweatshirts from like, like merch company, and it's like really, really, it's a bit much. But then you also have to, like, people get mad at that price, you know. But then you also have to figure out there's someone who has to package it, there's someone who has to design it, there's so many hours that go into pre-production that you have to pay off, right? Oh, this the second layer is definitely gonna be a full opaque white. Nice. 
Yeah, this is the level of white that I need right here. So if I didn't do the previous uh, paint pen layer, it probably would take three to get that fully opaque white. I also want to learn how to sew. That way I myself can like put on pockets or make adjustments. Because when my mom was in school, they had a required like home ec class. So they taught them like how to sew. Like she had to make a shirt from scratch and put buttons on. She said she hated it at the time, but like she knows how to sew right now. So she's able to like hem pants or me, that type of thing. And with pattern work, you can also see if you can get it printed, like for mass production. But I kind of like the feel of someone hand making it, you know? I think that appeal is really cool. Kind of like the handmanship behind it. You have to be able to pay people for their time. Like, I always wondered how products can be sold for like a dollar. But if it's being sold for that low price point, it's probably being made in a factory, so you're probably not necessarily paying for a lot of people to produce that specific item. I don't know. We got that base coat down. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then go ahead and start with the pattern. Or I'll wait for a little bit to see how it'll dry and then see how the underneath is still black or gray. So it didn't bleed all the way through. See how some areas are less opaque than others? So probably one more coat. Forgot to turn my sand off. Okay. Probably gonna need one more coat. 
You can see a couple areas are still not as opaque. Do do do. Okay, so that's about just about a fully opaque white. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brushes real quick, real quick. Oof! I promise I don't have a speech impediment. I think I'm scared I was getting peanut on my nails. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. And I'll probably go ahead and go over with the circle pattern. Well, that's gonna look so good, dude. I'll probably wait like five minutes. Um, I didn't answer the question today. Um, what's your favorite weird food combo? I'm one of the people who likes pineapple and pizza. And I like it. Like, I like savory and sweet, right? I think what takes it a step ahead is getting white sauce on a Hawaiian pizza. I think... <laughs> If pineapple is an abomination, the white sauce, ooh, people don't really like that. Yeah, I had a, a bubble milk tea today. No bubbles. I like the tapioca a lot. It's just like, whenever I drink it, I don't chew the tapioca, like I just, I just slip it down and then I get indigestion. 
So I, I usually will opt out of tapioca now. But this one was papaya flavored. So it's really good. I went ahead and muted that way you don't hear the excessive slurping because I just finished it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's still a little bit wet. Yeah, so this is what we're going for. Doing primary circles and then a black drop shadow behind. Trying to make it pop a bit more, look a bit 3D. I don't want to put that explicit black outline. I think I just want to do solid fill circles and then just the black shadow behind it. That's the goal. I asked my sister what type of pattern she wanted and then she didn't answer. I asked her. I was like, hey, can you send me, like, some reference ideas? That way you can get an idea of what you like. And she's like, I'll do it later. And I asked her that two weeks ago. So, hopefully she likes this. If not, then... Uh-oh. <laughs> I can always make more. If this works out. Because she will always get, like... She likes pattern stuff a lot now. Like, that's what she into. Uh, like, she has a lot of... Like pattern tees have like floral prints, not like flowers, but like leaf prints on it. Kind of like the background I have for my overlay. <sighs> yeah, I was so excited for this project. Like I was. Ooh, I'm so excited. Because I ordered these shirts two weeks ago. And I'm also thinking about, like, if this does succeed, then I need to think about, like, what type of or what company I want to buy, like, the shirts from. I definitely, if I launch a product, I do want it to be, like, somewhat sustainable. Like, I don't want, it, like, kids to make it. So there needs to be some type of um, thing to monitor. So, like, I'm just been doing research on the side. You also need to have different licenses and permits to be able to sell and resell. So, if I ever do launch something, it will probably have to take a couple months in order to do things right, you know? So. I just realized I'm on my bad Wi-Fi. I forgot to check that early. Now everything should be a little bit better. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. Because we have like three different Wi-Fi connections for house for some reason. Because like my dad would get a new Wi-Fi every time we upgraded the modem. So hopefully- oh, I feel so embarrassed now. That should be better. Yeah, that's a lot better. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so the hardwire- the connection I have for the hardwire in my room. I did not have set up. So I apologize. <clears throat> yeah, getting there almost dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pens ready. I'm also gonna do everything freehand. I want to avoid or try to avoid because I like the aesthetic of freehand like I will usually say the rulers are cheating and when you're working with a ruler sometimes your lines are still going to be like off in some aspect and that's because it depends on what angle you run your pen along the edge of the ruler right like if you're running your utensil at a straight angle, like right this, it's gonna be a bit further away than if you tilt your pencil along the ruler. It's little like things like that to make it so it's not like perfect, perfect. So I usually would just do freehand stuff. Just waiting. Because what I'm really scared about is like running my hand through the pattern. That's why I want to wait for it to fully dry. 
It's just about there. Let me see what it looks like from a distance. Yeah, that's just about a fully opaque white. Because I, I like rougher textures, personally. I say that and then I like fully opaque stuff. It just depends on the medium. You know, like this this is showing up fully opaque, but on my end, if I change the angle, see how it's not fully opaque there. That's okay, from a distance it doesn't really matter. That's another thing with t-shirt design. Like I researched a little bit, you have to have a very defined silhouette if you're doing like a pattern or a print because no one is going to be like six inches away when they're looking at you, looking at your shirt, right? So you have to have a very distinguishable like color palette, a very distinguishable shape and silhouette of your design. Not You don't necessarily need excessive detail because as I said, they're not going to be like right in your face, like right in your face looking at your chest of your shirt, right? So there's a lot of things to consider. I also need to decide if I want to keep like the circles the same size. Or maybe do them a little bit bigger. So if I hold it up from a distance, you can for sure see the pattern when they're this size. Like, all the colors kind of blend together from a distance though, because I'm looking in a mirror about 10 feet away from me. So maybe I can try to do the circles a little bit bigger. That way the pattern is a little bit more distinguishable from a distance. I personally really like this pattern a lot because adding the black drop shadow definitely has a lot of definition and then the brightly saturated primary colors definitely pop a lot. Okay, I think I can go ahead and start, maybe. I just have to be very careful. Yeah. See, that red is coming up. I can't really see it on camera because it's a little bright. Let's try zoom in, see if that will help. Oh, that definitely helps a lot. See, it is just about fully covering the white. I just have to wait for the white to dry. Because it is picking up the white a little bit. Yeah, I have to wait for it to fully dry. Big sad. So maybe while this one is drying, I can get started on the other one. So I'll probably start doing the base for the other shirt. Yeah, right now I'm cutting some more cardboard and paper that we can fit it in the pocket. I'm 
wish I had more space in my room. It's so annoying trying to work. Just a cram little corner. Sorry, I didn't mean to clip. Okay, so this is a large shirt, so for this one I wanted to do something on the pocket and then something on the sleeves. This is going to be the white-gray color scheme. So the pattern I had for this one is going to be um, bubbles. So I'm probably going to go straight with the acrylic paint pins on this one. And then keep the pocket gray just to save time. And then see how well these pens work on straight fabric.
It's also weird drawing flat. Because I usually draw on a slanted or elevated surface. Like, I usually draw on a binder. But this is just flat on the table. It's weird getting used to. First shirt is almost there, almost dry. I like how this bubble look is coming out though.
Ooh, look how opaque that is on cardboard. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's low-key kind of frustrating. Doing the paint on the fabric. I want to, like, look into how they, like, dye fabrics with patterns. I wonder how they do it. Like, you know, the really complex busy one or, like, a floral print? I'll have to look up a video later. I'm liking how the bubble looks. Okay, got the first coat down. Her shirt is almost dry. I think I'm gonna go over this one with the regular acrylic white. That way I get a bit more coverage. And then I think what I wanna do for this one is do like silver highlights. Because I have metallic paint pens. So I'm gonna go grab my paintbrushes again.
Oh no. I'm peeing on my desk. Now better. Yeah, right now, I'm putting another uh, coat of white onto the first one. See, it's not opaque when it's drying. I'm putting another coat on. I said earlier, these are going to be test C. Oh, well. Just the concept as a whole work. I'm painting it off camera because this is just where it's drying for now. I think doing full coverage stuff is definitely going to be difficult. Okay. I'm going to go over this one. Again with white, with regular acrylic. Yeah, it's coming out a lot more opaque here. So we'll see how opaque it is when it dries.
Oh, okay. Hmm. So that one is done. I think I'm going to go back to the first one for now. I didn't activate this yellow pin yet. Forgot to do that earlier. Oh no. Clipped by accident. You gotta be very careful to not clip. See what this slight darker blue looks like. Lighter blue. I'm gonna rotate this. That way I don't clip again.
I wonder how well Sharpies would work. I know Sharpies are fairly permanent as well. I'll have to look that up later. Yeah, this is not fully dry. I should get a heat gun. That's probably what I should invest in. So I think my mom has one, but I don't know where she put it. Try and go in with the medium tip black to fill in. Just touching up this edge real quick.
Oh, hola. Hey. How you doing, man? Doing for it today, Anna? Or Anna? I still don't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it. But I'm doing good. Honestly, really sweaty right now. It's, it's hella hot in my room. And, like, I don't have my ring light on today. And it's still, like... I'm dying right now. Probably because that heat wave, you know? Hope you're doing good, man. Oh. Okay, it's like Yana. Got it. Yana. Okay, I will remember that for next time, man. I'm um, eating my breakfast right now. Yeah, dude, it's 1245. <laughs> it's like, it's lunchtime, man. Night owls, I don't understand you guys. Yeah, it's weird today. Cause I usually wake up before my seven o'clock alarm, but past two days, it's been waking me up. It's like, oh no. I think it's cause like, I'm I've been able to hit REM 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 sleep a lot more recently. So I I'm not waking up throughout the night as much as before. I have some whack dreams though. Dude, see, my, so, my dreams have been so strange. Yeah. It's like I'm having a lot of high school dreams, too. Probably because I'm lonely. Because, <laughs> like, I don't really see my friends. I saw one of my friends two weeks ago, and then before that, I haven't seen anyone for eight months outside of work. It's like, we're all super prepared about, like, spreading disease, you know? Um, but yeah, it's weird. I probably just miss my friends. And like, you know when you have dreams about school, you think about people you haven't thought about in ages? Yeah. <sighs> Heard on this for today. Custom shirts. This is a pocket. I'm trying to emulate um, this pattern. Oops, done. This pattern on it. Yeah, because on this card, the circles have an explicit black outline. So I might do that at the end, after I do touch-ups. I've been going at this for nearly three hours, and it's low-key been frustrating because I haven't done paint on fabric before. And this white, because this pocket used to be gray, it took three or four layers to get on. Yeah, I clipped here. I'm gonna have to go over that again with blue. Oh! Because this white is not fully dry. So I have to be careful when I work. Yeah, I don't know how much t more time I'm gonna have today. Like, I thought I could get this done quicker. But I failed to realize that paint takes forever to dry on fabric. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll have more free time today. I'm coming out cool. Thanks, man. Um, my weird food combos, grilled cheese. Oh no! 
Oh no. <laughs> Grilled cheese with jelly? I don't even think that's weird, but I get roasted for it. Okay, I, I cannot vibe with you on that. That Oh uh, no, I can't. I'm I'm like visibly cringing right now, man. I literally can't. <laughs> Come on, bro, just try it. <sighs> okay, I if I make grilled cheese, I will try it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, do any of your other friends like it? Tell me that. Tell me that, dude. I need like five testimonies and then I'll try it. This is when you say, man, you could be one of my five. Oh no, yes? <sighs> Oof. <laughs> uh, okay, my weird food combo is I like pineapple and pizza, which some people don't like, but I like. Weird abomination, white sauce on the pizza. On the Hawaiian pizza. I think that's the weirdest for me. Cause like, I can't really think of anything other than that. It's like whenever I order it, like I haven't ordered it in person in a while, but the person would be like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely an abomination. Oh, buzz off. I also like anchovies on pizza too. Like if I'm getting mod, my pizza is whack. Oh yeah, I load it up because I I like being able to taste something different in every bite, you know. I hate PA and pizza. Well, what do you get on yours then? Do you get pepperoni like a basic bitch? Come on. <laughs> Oh, it's not fully dry. I hate this so much. This is the fabric. It's taking forever for the paint to dry, so... And trying to place on it blends. Just making me mad. <laughs> okay. Yes. Pepperoni ham, olives, bana banana peppers. <sighs> okay, basil. All that. Okay, I don't like anything pickled. It's like pickles, banana peppers. I like some olives, but not too much. Like, I don't like vinegar. I used to work at a, a, a pizza place called Pizza ends with a U T. okay? I used to work at that place. You would see the wackest stuff. Like, a guy ordered buffalo sauce, cheese, and just banana peppers. And we were like, what the frick is this? Um. Okay, I'm gonna get a phone call. I gotta beat real quick, okay?
Sorry, that was my dad. <laughs> um, I usually don't take calls when I'm streaming because it's low key rude. But I I get so anxious whenever like my mom or my dad call me. I'm like, what happened? You know. Um, uh, thank you for waiting, Yana. Appreciate it, man. Um, if you want to fight customers, dude, low key, like you know, I see the videos where like there's the one where like the McDonald's employees like chucks a blender at the customer, like. I want that to be me. <laughs> like, not actually doing it, not committing, but... Dude, there's some people that... Oh, just press your buttons. Anyway, I get anxious whenever my parents call me. Because we don't, like, text or call for funsies. Unless it's to send, like... My mom will randomly send me, like, recipe link. She's like, oh, you can make this. I'm like, okay, and then I never do. But... My parents got into a pretty bad accident. It has to be two years ago now. And I remember it was just me and my sister at home. And because they they didn't get home. Because at the at this point it had to be like they, they said they're gonna be home at like seven. No, at six, and at that point it was like six thirty. So I'm like, oh okay, I'm not home yet. It's kinda sus. My mom texts me. And like they never text us, right? And they got hit head on. By a drunk driver and we're like oh shit so i i, I low-key have separation anxiety now because of that but yeah crazy stuff yeah no sad yeah like it it affected us a lot like we're still trying to not to get too personal but we're trying to figure out like a settlement because they honestly have long-term side effects from it because they're old but not old old so they're still able to like move and function, but still put a damper on a lot of our endeavors. Um, but yeah, that's all. <laughs> like to get a little bit deep and personal, but a lot, of, a lot of our friends, it's common knowledge that this has happened. Like we don't keep it to ourselves. Like we'd rather talk about it. I hate the people that still drive drunk. Like we do not. How have we not solved this issue? Yeah. Um, it's very unfortunate because I'm indifferent. Like, what can you do to prevent this, right? Not have alcohol. What was it called? It's not abstinence. That's a whole different thing. But it's where you call really, like, ban drinking. I can't remember what it was. But honestly, I think that would be the only solution. Because people go to the bar, right? I don't think they, like, walk to the downtown bar. They probably drive there, or they get a car. So, I think there should be, like, no public parking near a bar. I think that would solve the issue. Because then, either you have to park your vehicle far away and have to walk to the bar, and people are lazy, so they don't want to be doing that. Or, they would get a car there, like a, a driver there, right? I think that could be one potential solution. Because you have to be proactive. Right? Um, cause I've had, like, parents and friends, like, be caught drunk driving. It's very unfortunate. Like, thankfully, no one got hurt. But, it's not being pro proactive or preventative in that specific instance. Like, obviously, jail time is not enough to stop people from doing actions. Um, I don't think it should be, like, illegal to drink. Maybe it should be... You should not be able, able to drink in public. Because theoretically, you'd be able to drink at home. When hopefully, you would not have to leave home after, you know? Uh, that's an interesting potential solution. Get some exercise too, yeah. Because I personally... <laughs> story time. I've, I'm 22, so I can drink legally. I was never invited to like house parties in school. So I never had the opportunity to be offered to drink, right? Um, which is cool, like... I like the idea of being sober all the time. My circle's way too big. Um, the only time- I accidentally had alcohol one time. Uh, we went to Ikea, and you know how there's like a grocery section at the end by the checkout center? So... I was looking through like the fridge, I was like, oh, there's cider! That looks good! Love me some apple cider, because in my American brain... I think cider is like sparkling cider, right? Ooh, delicious, yummy. A little bit of fizz. Kind of burns, but it's still good. 
So I grabbed the cider. And I grabbed some other like grocery stuff. Just to try out, right? Because they have some imported products. And um, at this point, I... <laughs> cider roll. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so I had to go pick up something from the pickup center. And it's like a 20 minute wait. So like... My dad comes to me, he's like, hey, I'll go check out for you. Let me take this groceries. So you can go wait by your pickups. So I'm like, okay. So he checks out. He buys his stuff, right? And he's he's old. Like, he, he, my parents are like 50 in their 50s. So they look, um, they look old, right? So my brain, um, I'm like, okay, cool. I get some cider when I get home. Sparkly cider, sparkly cider. So I get home. I, I pop the can open. Right, all right. It's got, it's got a cap on it. So I pop it open, take a sip. I'm like, this hits different. <laughs> I was like, this like this burns a lot more than usual. I look at the can, because the can is like a simple white, a cute like abstract apple on it. And then on the bottom, in fine print, it says 5% alcohol. In like little, like little print, right? And I'm like, oh no. And at this point, like I've down like half the 16 ounce can and me never having alcohol i'm just like oh no i'm tainted i ruined it i like to brag to my friends that i've never had alcohol like that's my talking point right i open with that and i'm just like frick no <laughs> my reputation is ruined oh before i i check the can funny thing i forgot to add my sister is in the next room so I'm like hey can you try this this tastes funny <laughs> so she takes the sip and she's like, mm -mm, I don't like this. She's like, it's weird. I'm like, yeah, it's weird, right? And that's when I look at the can. And my sister's younger than me by a year and a half. So this was last year when I was 21. So she would have been like 19. And I'm just like, oh no, I have given a, I've given a minor alcohol. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, she's fine because it's just a little sip. <laughs> so um, I had a. Uh, a shift at the pizza place later, right? And uh, it was a Friday night. It was a Friday night. So Friday nights or weekend shifts are usually hella busy. And I'm at doing my work, right? I'm like, oh, everything seems pretty fun. Because I only had like eight ounces of the can. So like probably had very little effect on me. But small brain, subconsciously, I'm like happier because I think like the alcohol is affecting me. <laughs> so yeah. The story of how Megan accidentally had alcohol. <laughs> I haven't al had alcohol since, so. Not because it tasted bad, but. I mean, it's just like. It's a pride thing for me. Like, I've never smoked cigarettes or weed or anything. Even though it's legal in our state, like, fully legalized. I'm just like. I like the idea of being fully cognizant because the argument my parents bring up is like you know what if there's an emergency so usually when they drink at home they only have one of them drink that way if there's something happens one of them can still drive you know yeah that's just my personal outlook like there's there probably will be a time where i want to drink or want to smoke but not right now um family image ruined yep ruined i told my mom <laughs> before i went to work that day and she's like dumbass <laughs> I mean, because, like, American cans, there's, like, laws and regul- I realized I was supposed to be red there. It's okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll cover when it's dry. Anyway, she, she's, like, dumbass. Because, like, American cans, there's laws and regulation. They have to be very clear. Um, with how you label the cans. That way freaking kids don't grab it. <laughs> or dumbasses like me. Um, body impure. Yep. Soiled. Can't go back now. No longer an alcohol virgin. <laughs> such a funny story. I need. It's such a good bit. I need to work on it. That way, when I launch my standoff career, that can be my opening act. I need to work on it. <clears throat> Loki's still pissed that I used the wrong color. I'm mad.
<clears throat> yeah, I need to research more about fabricating. I need to figure out what's a better way to do it. Because my pens keep picking up the fabric fibers. It's giving it a weird texture. Me being impatient, I'm not waiting for like the paint to fully dry either, so it keeps picking it up. That was like a perfect circle. I mean, are you gonna do anything today, man? You're just gonna chill. <clears throat> My grandma, I'm thinking about what I can make for lunch. I figured out how to make like crunch wraps, like you know, the kind from Taco Bell. And they're so fun to make. I usually... It's just cheese and whatever, like, meat is in the fridge. Like, leftovers from the other day. Or something. We always always have avocados in the house. I just put cheese, meat, and then avocado. If we have rice, I'll put a little bit of rice. If we have some chopped veggies, I'll put some in. I like spinach a lot. I'll draw. I tried to draw yesterday, but ended up not drawing anything. Are you gonna stream? Dude, I'll watch. <laughs> it's hard. Like, whenever um, I want to do art, I have to think about what I want to do beforehand. I find it so overwhelming to go and not knowing what I want to do. It's like, I'll usually, if I think of something, I'll draw a thumbnail and then go from there. Do you usually just do pencil stuff? So I looked at what you had posted on your IG. And it was just pencil stuff. It was really good. I think I saw some pointillism as well. I think it's always fun to try different mediums or styles. That's kind of what gets me into wanting to draw or make art again. It's a big reason why I got these paint pens. Because I've never actually used them. I've only ever like dabbled with them in art class in school. High school. So I would say if you don't know what to do, just try something different. That's why I like abstract a lot because I can like see where it goes. Just drawing from references. I get really frustrated whenever it doesn't look exactly like the ref. Because like I know I can do realistic renders. It's just like I don't have the patience for it sometimes. Yes, I'm a pencil man, and thank you. I sometimes do ballpoint pen. Yeah, I want to learn. Like, you'll see. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I shook my pen and it wasn't fully closed. Rip. Um, I really like seeing, like, the super hyper-realistic renders that people do with ball pen, ballpoint ink. I don't know how to do it. But, like, look, it looks really cool. Like, with, like, cross-hatching or pointillism or just, like, just blending the ink. It's amazing to me. Oh, frick. My black ultra fine is not dispensing as well as- I probably got paint jammed up in the tip. 
so it's not dispensing. Oh no. I wonder if I can go in with a toothpick and try and fix it. Like, I want to start doing semi-realism with pencil. Because I'm so used to having outlines and everything. Like, I need to break away from it. Yeah, I definitely messed up the tip on this one. Sad. Yeah, probably because the paint was still wet, or there's some fabric in it. It's not dispensing. Mm -mm. <coughs> I wonder how they print like patterns on fabric. I want to get a cricket. We have it. We have a cricket machine. It's just a matter of learning the soft the software. So I would like to make hyper detailed pencil cuts. So I've done pencil cuts by hand. And for me, there's a limit to my skill. Like I've I've seen like hyper realistic like portraits with paper cuts, and they're amazing. So I'd like to try and actually take the time to learn the Cricut software. Because I've been to craft fairs, oh, it's leaking a lot. 
And like a lot of the de designs that I'll see is just simple words. With, and then just iron, vi iron vinyl onto shirts. And it's like really cringe. I mean, it's fine. Like if that's your style, then that's cool. But I really appreciate illustration a lot. Like just simply writing a font, placing it on a shirt to me is lame. Like there's not... There, there is some intent and in, an in aspect of design to it, but to me it's kind of mid. Especially when like the computer will design the font for you can choose from like a catalog of fonts. I mean, it's mid. Like that's what middle-aged moms would make. Who have no art skill. And they're like, ooh, buy my shirts. And they look like crap. <laughs> my take. So I like this idea of trying to do hand-painted shirts. Definitely a lot more of an original concept for handmade. I think I want to try this next time with just straight acrylic paint. Because these pens are catching a lot on the fabric, a lot more than brush. But then I get a lot more precision with the pens, so I'm conflicted. I have another black one. Use that one. Try and activate a new ultra fine black. So I messed up the tip of the first one. I think it looks a lot better with that explicit black outline. Yeah, that looks a lot. You ever get depressed as fuck and don't know why, and then the next day Mother Nature's here to stay for a week? Abolish periods for real. Uh, yeah! Um, I'm on a birth control to where I don't have periods anymore. So, like, I started it two years ago now. And it's nice, like, because, like, my cramps weren't the worst, but it's still enough to, like, bother me. So that was one of the main reasons why I decided to start birth control. Um... If that's against your personal preferences, then that's okay. I get it, but I'd rather get a shot every three months than have to deal with something every month, you know? She said peace. Yep. <laughs> Don't want to deal with it. Like, just having to, like, the, anticipa the anticipation of waiting for it every month, like, made me anxious too. I like my mom. She never really, like, taught me what to do. Like, she just kind of knew that my period started. And she's like, oh, here's some pads. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she didn't tell me what to do. She's just like, oh, you can look it up online. I was like, 
Okay, mom. <laughs> but, yeah. Hope you're okay. Got some chocolate, take some ibuprofen. You have to do the whole nine yards to remove every little pain. Oh, what works me is the Janga. Well, that you do, you man. If that works, so go for it. <laughs> I mean, what do you do with like the workplace requires you to just not do drugos, you know? Like at Walmart, you gotta take a drug test. Oh, frick. Mm. Then I don't work there. <laughs> Loopholes. I mean, true. I, I'm i indifferent about like workplaces forcing like drug tests for marijuana because I understand that it does stay in your system for a couple of days after you use it, but the effects aren't long lasting. Kind of like alcohol. Like, you're, it, the only effects are there for maybe 12 hours, but they don't. don't I think alcohol is a lot more debilitating than marijuana, personally. I mean, you still can't drive under the influence of marijuana, I get that. But I think alcohol is a lot more harmful in that aspect. Like, if you're gonna operate machinery, that type of thing. Or fake, which I haven't done yet. Yeah. I've had people I know fake drug tests for people, which is bad. Very bad. But... To me, if you want the job that much and you need a job that much, then you shouldn't have to fake it. That's just my take. And like, to me, I don't like lying because like people are going to find out at some point. I'd rather be a good to good than break rules. <laughs> I don't know. Because like the way I was raised, like if you do something wrong or bad, then that's the end, you know? Like, I'm, I'm being a good, 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 good right now because I'm not working, so I have to be on my toes all the time, you know, no acting out, no talking back. But, I mean, that's fine for now. I mean, I still pay my fair share of rent or share of the mortgage because I have enough saved to last me a year if I'm not working. I only have to go back to work for now. Someone else here in the house lost their job, which hopefully won't happen. So, I mean, this outline is looking kind of rough, dude. These lines aren't as clean as they could be. I'm gonna have to touch up later a lot.
I assume there, there are like medical cards you can get too. But then it also depends on the workplace. If they will honor that medical card. I guess. It's coming out pretty good. Just looking at it. I'm gonna wanna look at it from a distance for now. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to clip. It's definitely a little dark. I think that's fine. So this one's from my sister, so she doesn't like its skirt. <laughs> I think she'll be fine with it because she knows this is my first one that I'm trying. Thank you. 
Getting another skin cone. That's weird, because, like, I have my headsets in, right? My phone's on vibrate, but it's still ringing just in my headset. That's weird. I've never had that happen before. So I don't want you guys to hear whenever I get calls. Maybe I gotta adjust my settings on the phone. I don't know. I think I'll go for about 20 more minutes. So I honestly gotta get started on my work soon. Oh no, this pen is leaking. It's all over my hands.
Yeah, I think we're gonna have to wait to continue doing the top colors once the white has fully dried because it's clogging up my pens. So I'll probably finish this one tomorrow because I'm honestly getting really annoyed with it. So for future reference, do base cut first and then do designs after. Okay, so for this one, I was gonna do white and then a silver highlight. This one's fully dry. Probably the other one had. Maybe I should have waited for the coats in between to dry. Then I would have gotten a better result.
Yeah, right now I'm adding silver accents. It's kind of hard to see. Still experimenting with these pens on the fabric. Oh, I got quiet, but I'm still there. Okay, that's cool. Don't gotta chat. I don't talk much either, so it's like just studying or just chilling, studying a bit of flash arts. Cool. Is it for your Japanese or something else? Yeah. I need to practice just talking on my own. Like, I don't really talk unless I'm talked to, so. I need to work on it. I should just change it to rock music to mess with you, dude. <laughs> mess up the more chill vibes. Because I do have some royalty, like, pop punk stuff I can queue up. I appreciate your support either way. Hanging out with the <laughs> one viewer, Andy. Yeah, you can't even see the metallic once it dries. Disappointed. Yeah, Japanese cool. I'm really glad that you're dedicated to that. That's actually really cool and not cringe, even though I might make fun of you for it. It's not cringe, it's cool. I'm trying to diversify. It's really good. I love your Andy's streams of progress. Yeah. It's I definitely like them. Like I'll randomly go and just search around. Cause you definitely get that one of the one interaction and I like that attention. I remember I was watching... This individual has like 3,000 followers, I think. And their streams usually have... Like 10 to 20 people, depending on the day. And what they stream. But he was doing art. And he was working on a logo. And he was trying to think of an idea for a concept. And... I suggested like this really good idea. And he's like, oh my god, that's a great suggestion. And I'm like, ah, you know, so happy. <laughs> Because I, I don't know. That, that's what I like about Twitch a lot. Is you get like that live engagement. Because like on YouTube you can just leave a comment. But here you get like just about real time reactions. To someone that you look up to you know. Or you like engaging with. And it's really cool. The only thing I am scared about is like the insilly types. Like, I went out for a bike ride this morning and <laughs> there was a, a paper sign that wasn't laminated. It had just like clear packing tape all over it. And it said, I was gonna pull up a picture, but then I was like, this is way too close to my house. I cannot post this anywhere because you don't know if there's crazies, right? But it said, the truth is in the constitution and then a link. <laughs> Which is funny because it's a long ass URL, right? So like someone would have to take a picture of it and then go to the link. It wasn't a QR code, it was just, like they typed out the link. <clears throat> I wanted to go to the link just to see what it was. I assume it was by some right leaning person, which is fine. And me wanting to be a rebel. Well, like I wanted to go home. Yes, and boomer, probably. I live in a very white town. I think the last time I looked at the statistics, it was like 85% white. Uh, no, it has to be like 90% white, 8%, no, 
Hispanic. Like, 3% Asian, like, 2% Black, so, like, it's very white here. Which is fine. Like, I personally haven't had any trouble. Thankfully. Um... Yeah, it's probably some boomer. I really wanted to go home, grab a Sharpie, and just be like, what truth, question mark? <laughs> and then, hot take. Just be like, like, Republicans are borderline anarchists already. But then I was like, you know, the person who put that up, they're probably, like, whack enough. Because in my head, I'm thinking, like, oh, what if they put a camera to see, like, how people would react, and then they see me do that, and then they find out where I live, and they like, kill me. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to be a lot more careful. Like, I don't want to post any pictures of my house, you know. Because there will there are people who will take it too far, you know what I mean? That's why I'm kind of hesitant to share my takes. Because I don't want to get people too angry. But, I don't know, I'm just trying to be very careful. And then my fucking mom, she'll like post pictures of the garden with like our neighbor's house in the background. So if so someone crazy enough could like image trace us back to find our house, like... I yell at her every time. <laughs> like, nice leak on paper, Grandpa. <laughs> I know, right? Let me copy paste that. I know, it's like, dude. Okay, someone has to be curious enough to, like, investigate further, which people are not. People just take things to surface level nowadays, which pisses me off. Okay, story time. So, on Facebook, right? Even if you have a private account, Sometimes your comments are public, so people can see what you comment. Um, a person posted, because this was a mutual friend of mine, whose account is private. But I could still see their post, because someone shared it to their personal Facebook page, right? And it was a graph. This was three years ago, so right after I graduated high school. So this person, they said, hey, my younger brother, who's in high school, was given this paper from school. I probably still have a picture of it somewhere. I saved the post, I think, so I can pull it up and read off of it another time. But it was basically talking about, like, the current white supremacy in society and how... Like, just basically explaining how white supremacists see the word in, like, a di the world in, like, a diorama, right? And the caption he put on that picture he posted of that specific assignment was like, How can they be teaching this to school? This is unacceptable. Okay, let me pause and explain. This diagram, it was sourced from a book, right? And it had, it was probably sourced, like it had like the author name, the book where it's from, and like the page and extra. So I found the book online. And the book was talking about like how racism is current in our society and ways to be more aware and like anti-racist, right? So in my head, I'm like, people are not looking, they're taking it at surface level. Like they think, that just by showing this specific drawing is advocating this specific mentality or behavior, which is not what it is. Um, it's basically bringing awareness so people understand how certain individuals who believe that certain groups are better than others and trying to not enlighten, but kind of give that perspective on why they think this way, right? It's not advocating it, it's called perspective. And what's funny, there was like 20 comments under that post he made. He's like, yeah, how dare they teach us? Let's get that teacher fired. Ooh. But then it's like, people don't understand. This is probably from a social studies class. So they're encouraged to look at things that aren't like entirely PC, right? Just because you're teaching to school does not mean you advocate for it. It's kind of like how people like the whole critical race theory debate, like we should not be teaching this in school. It's like, no, if you silence that part of history, then... People will not be aware of it, and then not understand why current divide is happening. It's not... It's just frustrating to me how some states are pushing towards abolishing teaching just any type of racial history at all. Like, one of my neighbors, she grew up in Virginia, I think she said. And in Washington, right? Um, in one of the towns, there was a major internment camp. And this personally bothers me a lot, or affects me a lot, because my grandma... She's Japanese, right? She grew up in Hawaii. She, at the time, during um, World War II, she was a government worker, so she personally was not interned, thankfully. Um, but she's had friends who were interned at that time, and it's very traumatizing to them. And anyway, so I grew up in Washington, so I was taught that in school. 
And for like the MLK assemblies, one year in high school, they actually focused on Japanese internment because in a nearby town was a major camp, which I think is really cool uh, that they tried to um, expand that presentation that year. Um, anyway, so my neighbor, she grew up in Virginia. She said she was not taught this in school and she's like 60-ish. So not teaching that in school, they don't know why I don't like this specific group of people because you weren't taught that history. And I personally am an advocate, like, teach everything in school. Like, I don't care. You need to show history, right? That's why America is so messed up. Like, in Germany, they're required to teach about the Holocaust for that exact reason, so it does not happen again. And, yeah, critical race theory is BS. Do not advocate for abolishing it. It's, it's not a- Oh, it's a whole debate. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the more you erase, the more it's bound to be repeated exactly what the weirdos want. Yeah, exactly, because the less you talk about things, the less awareness there is, the less understanding you have about your own personal biases and behaviors. So, um, just really glad I live in Washington, dude. Like, I would not be able to survive in a southern state. Like, I would die. Probably be hate crimed. I don't know. Um, yeah. Because I'm like an hour away from Seattle, and dude, it's crazy during the protests. Like, my mom, she's full Japanese. Like, she was so scared of being attacked during the height of like the hate crimes against Asian Americans like she was scared to go outside and it's really unfortunate that America is supposedly advanced enough past lynching people but it's, it's still there the sentiment is still there um scary stuff but yeah but let's keep it light let's keep it light <laughs> Uh, the stand oh, let's go back to heavy. The standard U.S. history class is nothing but a falsified white man highlight reel. I know. I know. It's it's unfortunate. Like, I saw this one article that was comparing textbooks about... It was actually on... I watch a lot of Hassan Abi, Like, very far... If you're familiar, very far left-leaning. Which I agree with most of his takes or opinions. Um, he was highlighting an article that compared... A textbook from California, I think, and then a textbook from... Probably like South Carolina or something. And <laughs> it was really bad because the California textbook was highlighting like what slaves actually went through. And then the Southern textbook was like, oh, the workers on the farm. It's like, nah, it's not what it was. Because using select for specific word choices definitely shapes the narrative. And when kids are taught, that's all they're taught, they don't understand the perspective. So, very unfortunate. Like, I think there should be, like, a standardized national curriculum, which some people are advocating for, and some teachers may not like it because they can't teach their own specific style. But if everyone learns from the same textbook, then I think there would be less racial divide in different states in the country. I personally believe that. Concerning, like, history curriculum. Um, I mean, like, they're advocating, like, in our district for, like, a standardized... Um, way to teach math in elementary school like the way they teach math now is kind of messed up like oh it's so complicated <laughs> like when I was at the daycare a couple years ago like I try and help kids with their homework they're like oh they taught me to do it this way and it's like little bubbles with numbers and I'm like what the frick is this um yeah I think I'm more I guess involved with that specific thing because my mom works for the school district so she has a lot more insight on what goes on behind the scenes um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to do with this one. My dad said he wanted like, silver, but the silver's not showing up, so rip. I think it'd be fun to do, like, little eyes. I think that'd be funny. <laughs> But yeah, maybe I'll add some black. Not the black I busted it though. BRB? Okay, no problem, man. I'll be here. <laughs> I won't leave.
You know, those eyes look interesting. Let me zoom in a little. I think that's a cool little touch. Or detail, rather. I really want to learn how they print large pattern shirts. Because it always looks so clean. I think my mom would like this pattern. She's really into like skulls and eyes. That type of aesthetic. Yeah, the only issue I think I'll have with the intermediate fasting is... Because, like, right now I'm, I'm just having two meals a day. It's like breakfast and then lunch. But with this current stream schedule... Like, I'm cutting into my lunch time. It's like, I don't want to eat on stream. It's awkward. This ain't no mukbang. I mean, unless people want that, then maybe. But <laughs> I've been told that I chew loudly. And it's funny because we had a friend over for dinner ages ago. And they told me afterwards, they're like, yeah, you, you guys chew really loud. And I was like, oh. Probably because like, there's not much talking. <laughs> but.
I think maybe what I have to do, because this is showing up really well on just a straight fabric. Maybe just going straight in with every color that is meant to be will work better next time. So maybe, I mean that kind of is kind of unavoidable in the first one because the background is supposed to be white. So maybe what I have to do is paint the fabric and then sew the pocket on if it's going to be a pocket design. Maybe that's what I gotta do. You funny this became a political show? <laughs> I become a political commentator. I mean right now, just commentary in general is really popular, like on YouTube and Twitch. That's the current, I guess, meta. A meta I had in mind, like as a meme, would be to do We Fit. <laughs> Mainly because <laughs> like the first time I'd play it. Um, because so you do like the daily body test, right? And it weighs you and then tells you like if your OB's normal or underweight. Oh, what's the meta? Um, I like on Twitch, like just people reacting to stuff. Hey, Yana, glad you're back. Um, a funny concept, I think, like a funny meta to meme would be doing We Fit. Because you know how there's a body test? It tells you like if you're under normal or like overweight. And I got a Wii back in 2008, so I think it was out for a year or two, and that was my first console ever. Like I said, I'm not a gamer, but I remember even then, <laughs> I'd step on the board, and it would say, like, I was overweight, and it'd go, do 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 Because, <laughs> but in, like, a more, like, somber tune, because being overweight is bad. <laughs> I, um, like, I had an idea for, like, I had... Like a title and a thumbnail idea ready. But my mom, she would not let me use the Wii. Because I, I told her about this idea I had. She's like, oh yeah, you can use it. And then like right when I want to start streaming. She's like, oh no, you can't use it now. I want to use it. But it's like, ma, it's been literally sitting in the closet for two years. No one has used the Wii Fit. And now that I say I want to use it, you want to use it? Because <sighs> she's like, yeah. I want to use it because I want to exercise, but it's like... I've been talking about this idea I had for a while, and now I can't do it because you want to use this stupid Wii Fit. So I bought a Ring Fit for my Switch. So once I have gaming set up, that'll be my new meta. Um, e. We fit meta would be tight. I know it'd be so funny, <laughs> cause like the, there's like so many bits you could do. We should do the meta. We should do it. Yana, let's do it. <laughs> Become the new hype beast of Twitch. Good watches us. <laughs> also, I think it's really funny how like the new meta for like the more popular humans is like collabing because it's just really fun to see people whose personalities you already like like mesh with each other 
that's just really fun. I know tomorrow Hassan is doing an IRL stream that's like barely OTD. Like I think the difficulty I'll have I've always struggled talking to people. Not as much now, but when I was younger. But like reaching out to people is really difficult for me. So I think Ooh, whoa, my god, I got wait for a sec. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, it's probably like it's my setup. It's my freaking Mac. She she's humming right now. Earlier, like I was connected to the wrong Wi-Fi. And I didn't realize till now we're in. So like it was fine, but it was like it was a bit more laggy than it could be. I was like, oh, rip. Uh um. It was insane. But yeah, I really like the current meta. It's definitely entertaining. And hopefully traveling will be it safe will be a bit safer soon. I said earlier I haven't really seen much of my friends. Um Loki annoyed. Because uh, my parents don't like that I want to see my friends. So, like, no. Go get sick. I'm like, we're all vaccinated in our house. We're all protected, right? But, like, my mom, she's seen, uh, like, several friends multiple times a week. And it's like, how can you, like, give me crap for wanting to see one of my friends just once? And she's seeing so many people now. I don't know. I mean, the thing I've learned is just to, like, just shut up and take whatever they say. Like, it's not worth a fight. I just realized I'm coloring in the supposed iris of the eye. What? With normal eyes. <laughs> like, who has white irises? Like, I don't think... Anyone, like, naturally would have white irises. Seems kind of sus. I was just gonna make a meme about how I'm up 420, but I missed it. I'm a 421. For <laughs> for the longest time, I didn't understand the 420 meme. Because when I was in middle school, that's when it was like really big. And everyone would be like, hey, 420, ooh. But like, I didn't get it. <laughs> but, oh man. I swear the internet makes us worse. It ruins us. That's horrible. Y'all were in middle school. I know, right? <laughs> um, Because I think when I was in... I went to junior high, so it was... Uh, 7th to ninth graders, because... Way too high population to have a middle school, right? Where they, you got sixth graders too. To me, that's insane to have sixth graders in with like older kids. To me, that's weird. Anyway, like we were on like the cusp when like memes were getting really big. And, like online culture, just getting there. I find it weird how like every kid has a cell phone now. Like, I find that kind of sus. 
Like, I had my first cell phone when I was in seventh grade, and I had a blackjack. Not a blackberry, a blackjack. So, like, the knockoff blackberry. And the only thing I could do on it, I, like, I could call and text people. But, like, I, they had, like, it had a brick breaker game on it. So, like, I, I've been playing that all the time. Also dangerous, yeah. I think. Ooh. Because, like, I don't. Uh, I'm indifferent. Because, like, if. God, if I have ever a kid. Like. Like, kids be having iPads now. Like, what the, f what the fuck are you doing? Like. <laughs> like, everyone in the house has their own iPad. Mm. Um. I don't. I'm indifferent. Like, I wouldn't want my kid, like, perusing the internet, because, you know, there, there's creeps out there, you know? But, I'm like, I don't want to restrict them too much. Like, I know there's, like, like safe modes you can put on your devices, so kids can't browse too much. But there's a way to hack. If they get smart enough, they can figure out how to disable it. Like, I saw this one video where it showed you how to, like, enable this, the kids' safe features on, like, your iPad. But it's like... I don't know, because, like, the idea of having, like, a, a family computer seems kind of weird to me, too. I don't know what I do. This is why I'm like, just don't have a kid. And I don't gotta worry about it. Don't gotta stress. Don't gotta make these hard decisions. Um, it's also because, like, the internet is fairly new. Not, not new new, but, like, the idea of sharing information. And people... I mean, there's kids who grew up with smartphones. Like, that was what was available. It's... It's weird. Oh, Mike's bugging out again. Sorry about that. I use a Bluetooth microphone. Because I don't like having, like, a mic in front of me. So, yeah, sometimes it bugs. I'm not sure if it's a connectivity issue. Maybe, because I read somewhere that if you turn the Bluetooth off on your other devices, it the, s the signals won't interfere. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, it's weird because like I keep my uh, streaming software open that way I can just like glance over and see. So like anytime I see that I'm not talking and it's picking up something, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> it's picking up kind of loud though. Maybe I'm just talking too loud. I don't know. It's getting way too hot. Like we don't have AC in our house, so I'm dying. Okay, I'm not sure what else I can add to this one. Let's see what it looks like from this way. Zoom out a little. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like little eyes. It looks kind of cool. Oh, sorry, didn't mean clip. You can tell from a distance, but I think it's a cool detail. And this one's from my dad, so he'll probably like anything I make, honestly. <laughs> So I'll let this one dry for now. Let's see if the first one is any more dry. Nope, still wet. Still pissed off about that. Like, it's making me mad. I honestly want to keep, like, stream short. Because, like, target is two hours. But I could probably go all day. Then it's like, if I get in the habit of going for too long, then I'm gonna neglect my other responsibilities, you know? Which is bad.
Dad getting hooked up with tonight, sure. E gonna get that trip. <laughs> um Yeah, I wish I'm honestly not liking how the fabric's picking up the pen. I I I'm gonna look at more articles later and see if there's another way to do it. Cause I like I kinda want the look of like a clear print. Like printed fabrics. That's the kind of look I want to go for, but how do you make that at like a consumer level? Like it's interesting because a lot of um, equipment that is typically available in factories is available for like a normal consumer. So like, i.e. like a pressure cooker. Like that's the equipment they would typically use in a factory but larger scale, right? Or like a button maker. Or how people are able to jam at home when they're going to make small batches. Or I think to me a more surprising thing that you can sell like just have at home is like a freeze dryer. Those are hella expensive because for a freeze dryer, like you know they have freeze dried fruits, um, those you have to install like it into your walls. Because you have to install like a, uh, some type of pipe thing that will dispense like coolant. And it costs like two to five grand. Never, literally never heard of freeze dryer. Like you know like freeze dried strawberries? Um, it's like a dehydrator, but it freezes it. Like, you know, like, they sell, like, the gimmicky, like, frozen ice cream. Like, ast it's astronaut food. It's the machinery that makes that. It, it takes, like, 12 hours to freeze strawberries. It's insane. And the machine costs way too much, but they sell it to, like, anybody. Anyway, the whole point is, like, just the advancement of... Just the, access uh, the accessibility of factory-level equipment. Kind of like how you can buy like a lawnmower, but that's fairly common now, right? Like how people can buy like I just had to, like a cricket like that cuts paper and vinyls and stuff, and that costs a couple hundred when you're only gonna spend maybe a couple hours using it. And people have like the hope of selling a product and making money, but they already invested like 200 for the equipment and then. 500, no, a couple hundred in supplies, but they're in the hole, like 400 if they sell, like, maybe 10 units. That's how those industries are so successful, right? Because you get the idea, the hope of becoming successful. I don't know, just the cynic in me. Um, yeah, like, I bought, I myself, <laughs> I bought a button maker. A couple of weeks ago to make a couple pins and buttons, and it was fun. But I only used it once. I mean, it gave me like two hours of entertainment. But it's interesting to me. I mean, that's the glory of the American free market. Like anyone can make money. And then in turn, anyone can sell stuff. And hopefully get a return. Oh, that line's way too thick. Big sad. I also want to get back into printmaking or carving like rubber stamps if y'all have ever seen those it's kind of like wood carving but you're carving into a rubber block and then it's kind of like screen printing the final product you put ink on the block and then you transfer or press the image onto either fabric or paper because we did a thing called letterboxing which is, if you heard of geocaching, it's basically geocaching. Very similar concept. You follow clues and then you... It's usually hidden on like trails or parks. They hide a container that has a stamp and then you stamp the image and then you put it back. Kind of like treasure hunting almost. So my mom would have me carve images for her. That way she could plant boxes. And I think I'm pretty good at stamp carving. The only issue why I don't really want to do it now is because a lot of the times she would have me make images that I didn't draw. The stealing art is bad. 
do not trace that's illegal <laughs> um, but I have to get good enough at illustration to be able to claim that the image I carved is mine you know because I'm at IG I had posted a couple stamps that I carved with illustrations that were in mine and then I took them down later and my friend was like, why did you take them down? I was like, well, technically those aren't my drawings. Like, I didn't draw them. Like, yes, I took the time to carve the image, but it's not my illustration. So to me, it feels bad to keep it up. Or keep it posted, implying that I made the image, you know? Like, there's a fine line when using references. Like, if you're drawing from a photo, yes, you use someone else's image, but you did the rendering all yourself. To me, that's... it's fair use, you know? So, like, that's okay, but when you're tracing... I'm also indifferent about, like, tracing photos. Um, because that's fine, I guess. Like, if you're making, like, a multicolored poster, or, like, if you're making a stencil, like, that you use for, like, airbrushing, and you're tracing a photo, to me that's fine, because you're not just tracing the photo saying you drew it, right? You're using... It, it then becomes mixed media at that point, in my opinion. So to me, that qualifies fair use. But when I see, like, people trace illustrations, I'm like, that's bad. Don't do that. It's different if they're a kid, because they don't know any better, and they're still learning. You don't want to, like, count them too much. Like, don't get them cancelled for tracing a picture, you know? By kids, I mean, like, let's say up to 16. Like, if you're not 16, you're not a kid. Or you're yeah, if you're not 16, you're still a kid. Or mentality of a kid, I mean. Like, they're still learning. It's not like they're trying to monetize off of anything. I'm still getting used to this camera setup. Like, I'm, I still think that y'all could see my head. Because <laughs> whenever I draw or render, I always have my face, like, way too close to my paper. Because I'm blind as frick. Maybe there's a reason why most printed fans are polyester. Maybe because they're able to hold ink better or transfer images better. I definitely want to research that now. It's funny, I said I'd only go for 20 more minutes, and that was an hour ago. <laughs> it's mainly because, like, once I start something, I want to finish it, you know? 
this is my swatch paper. It's like a good thing flowing and it's covered now. Gonna see what this looks like. I think it looks good. Honestly, this is showing a lot better on camera. <laughs> Looks kind of grab in person. Because, like, the way the fabric is picking up the ink, there's a lot of feathering. I mean, you can't see it from a distance, but, like, me, six inches away, it's making me mad. I don't know. We'll see. This is a strat. I'm trying to just press down and let the ink dispense on its own. And then it kind of pulls in a circle. I know that's not how you're supposed to do it, but we're trying it. Yeah, I think this is as long as I've gone for five hours. I'll, I'll go for five hours today. I'll hit that. That'll be the goal. So I could draw all day if I really wanted to.
I'm almost at the end of this music playlist because what's cool about the service I use is that it has curated or curated sorry playlists that have like different genres there's only three songs left Oh, delete, delete. Yeah, I think I want to work on, since I have a lot more time. BRB again? No problem, man. Uh, I think I want to try with art. Just try new stuff. I get too comfortable. And so I really hope the stream will force me to do new things. Like my first week, I just did sketch cards when I was planning on doing, like, painting. It's mainly because I get too comfortable. I need to expand more. Yeah, I think I busted my black pens, dude. Mad. Big sad. Oh, there we go. We back, we back. Listen's back.
to see what the full opaque color looks like, just on the straight black. I think I'm going to hold on the white for now, for tomorrow. I want to see what, because I wanted to do the trim. One trim yellow, one trim blue, one trim red. I'm going to try that now. Just to see what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna move it this way that way I don't clip. See what the red looks like on the black. Yeah, stick is definitely picking up a lot. Yeah, I think we'll have to go in with actual acrylic paints, because these pens are not going to do it. Maybe I'll try use fabric, like the puffy paint. I think I will try that because we got hella puffy paint at home. Because that might be more opaque. Because I don't think the fabric absorbs the fabric paint as much. Okay, back. Are you adding color to the color? Yeah. The plan was I did thumbnail sketches earlier at the start, but I accidentally threw it away. So the plan was <laughs> to do the pocket with um, this design, right? The opaque bike and then the circle pattern and then do the collar trim and then the, sh the sleeve trims with um, red, yellow, and blue. I think what I'm gonna have to do, because the acrylic is not, it's absorbing way too much of the paint. I'm gonna try and experiment with fabric puffy paint and see like maybe try thinning that out because i know fabric doesn't pick up puffy paint as much so i, I switched to color because the pocket was pissing me off <laughs> so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just seeing how much this part will absorb the paint pen you can see it's coming up not fully opaque well this like i said it's all a test to see how well it'll do Whew. yeah i really want to learn how to sew That'd be fun. I like watching like TikToks or reposted TikToks on Instagram and the reels of like people sewing stuff. It's really cool to me. Like just the ability to make stuff with your own, like on your own, with your own hands. It's really cool. I really gravitate towards people who are crafty or rather like craftsmen it's so, like people who do like ceramics or metal work or paint i really admire 
Because you have to be creative and also skilled, you know? Yeah, this fabric is busting up my pens. A big sad. See, this is why I don't like doing new things. If they don't work out, I get annoyed. <laughs> it, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm, I'm goofing, but... Just slightly agitated. That's okay. Just gotta find a solution, you know? Nice, yeah, you will find a solution. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> it, it's cool, because trying new mediums, you find what works for you. You can find a workarounds, or what technique works. Never give up. Yep. Never. <laughs> I appreciate the encouragement. I also appreciate you coming back. Like, it's... It sucks to have no viewers. Like, it's fine, but... Ah. Uh, I don't know. Still getting used to the whole broadcasting thing. Not that I want to be famous, but... I don't know, just a weird sense of like wanting my voice to be heard. It's really appealing to me. I also like being able to... help and encourage people. Like when I was at the daycare, my favorite thing... would be like to show kids how to draw something and then them like doing it and then being motivated to want to draw more like that was so it was good for me you know seeing how your directions or actions directly affect other people it's validating and also makes you feel good you know I think that's another- Oh, frick. Okay, I didn't- I didn't clip. I didn't clip. That's another thing about the internet, too. Is that anyone can find you. Anyone can listen to your opinion. Like, it's not just your immediate friends and family who will listen to you, but, like, strangers from, like, across the country or across the world can listen. I also don't want to be too negative. Like, it's not entertaining to see someone talk down about themselves all the time. Like, seeing people molding and get mad is entertaining. But when it's when they're like that all the time or like really pessimistic, it's just not it's not fun to listen to or watch. Because I know for me, like consuming like YouTube or Twitch is definitely not a distraction per se, but like Like seeing someone else have fun. You want to live vicariously through that, you know? Because when I see someone being sad, I get sad. Oh no, that's weird. Yeah, I'm trying to feel good, lol, yeah. <laughs> Only good vibes. <laughs> and like... I understand there's like, opinions that you should keep to yourself. Like, I think activism is very important. I don't post about it all the time. Because there's a difference between, like, false activism and, like, actually helping, like, either volunteering or donating to causes you believe in. Like, I was indifferent about, like, the whole black box thing last year. Um. I don't know. 
it just like it felt like people did it for the wrong reason also kind of like the whole marketing scheme of like pride month too seems kind of sus and false how it only was kind of popularized once like gay or marriage was legalized even then still really stigmatized in modern day like not to get political again but my take is um you know people openly post like uh, their uh, pronouns or like pride flags in the bio, which I do because I, I think it's really good to be somewhat um because like, like the more awareness you bring to it the more people are will be educated right like people will openly post that that's great you know progressive policy is good like I want the people who are racist and like who don't like certain individual groups to like openly put it in their bio you know because I know for sure because all my accounts are public online, like, if I don't hide anything. Like, I don't care. Um, like, if I don't get hired because, like, I support my fellow queer folk, you know, then how could someone get hired when they're an open racist, you know? Doesn't seem right. Because to me, if I'm an employer, because an employer can easily save your phone number to their phone, right? And they can find your accounts online just, like, going to their contacts. It'll recommend you once you add a new contact to your phone, right? There are social media accounts. Um, like, if someone openly posts that though, they're like anti human rights. And would they get hired after that? No way. No way. Because you don't want that type of person in your work environment, right? Because having that individual there is going to create a more unsafe work environment, right? Like, people, <laughs> like the care and expose videos. Or like the racist guy at Walmart, they're getting pissy about like, oh, I got fired. Feel bad for me. But it's like, no. If you openly act like that in public, imagine what you act like behind closed doors. Or like against certain individuals. Like, I can only imagine that you're a harasser, you know? You're like, I don't want that in my workplace. I don't want someone to feel unsafe. You know? Um, because I've been harassed in the workplace before. And it's not it's not cool. It's not okay. Yeah, Pearl falling for that. I'm not falling for that well. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I've been harassed before, and it's and more action could have been taken in that such a situation. But ultimately, it comes down to if you see anything in your workplace, just speak up. You know. Um. If you see it happening, try and comfort the victim and bring it up to higher ups. And if um, pirates aren't gonna do anything. I'll just say leave the company. Like it's not worth it. Like if they're not gonna if they're not gonna protect you or that individual, then you feel unsafe. It's not a good situation. Just leave. I mean, right now Target is offering to pay your college tuition. So we're a Target. I know for us, like our minimum wage is thirteen sixty something. Like Target was offering like a dollar up, and I was like, ooh, that's pretty good. But I don't know. Because ultimately, like, HR just wants to protect the company or the company image. I mean, unfortunate. They don't really care about the individual. They just don't want to get sued. Um. Why is today oddly political? I don't know. <laughs> like I said before, I think it's important to talk about stuff. Heard five hours already. Oh my god, I can't believe I've been doing this for that long. I was only planning to go for three. Big sad. It's funny because I'll, I'll, I like to combat my parents on like issues. And it's so funny because like. My mom is very firm in her beliefs, like, that's okay, whatever. Like, believe what you want to believe. But, like, my dad... <laughs> like, I will get to the point where, like, I'll convince him to change his mind. <laughs> it's just so funny. Um... But, yeah.
Oh my god, my hands are so sweaty. I can't open the caps. Oh no. There's probably like a solid 95 in our house right now. I don't want to dox myself, but we live near a train track. <laughs> it's so funny, because um, we lived here. I've lived here my whole life, basically, so I'm used to it. Like I don't hear it anymore. I only really notice it when like stuff starts shaking. I'm like, oh, shot a train. Oh, holy moly! Please stay hydrated. Yeah, I had a. I've been drinking water. Thanks, appreciate it. Um. Uh, definitely gotta stay hydrated, cause like I don't go out much. It's like. My goal is to drink, because I have, like, a reusable Starbucks cup that I bought a while ago. Like, it's a solid, like, 24 ounce, so I try and drink, like, two or three of those a day. Um. Yeah. So, I'm trying my best. Oh, uh, what's this thing? Yeah, so we live by train, and we have a couple of new neighbors that moved in a couple weeks, within a few weeks. They're like, yeah, the train's so loud! <laughs> but it's like, yeah. Uh, that's how it is. I don't be having anything expensive on your shelves, you know? Like, I used to have a wall shelf right above my bed in my old room. And I would always be so scared that it'd fall down. Because, like, it would shake so much. And I used to put, like, little statues on it. And, like, surprisingly, nothing ever fell down off of it. I think it's kind of weird how Washington is getting so hot. Like, people be like, Ooh, we're breaking heat records every year now. It's like, yeah, there's a reason why that's happening, but deniers <laughs> aren't pushing for any new regulation or policy. Gotta keep the rich richer, right? Um, but like, my parents asked me, like, if you can move anywhere, where would you want to move? I was like, eh, I don't know. Honestly, I'd want to move somewhere where it's supposedly cold. Because, like, if it's a hundred here in Washington. It's like in like five, ten years, it's gonna be hella hot in like already warm tropical places. It's like I wanna move somewhere cold, like maybe Canada or Alaska. Cause then in five years, it'll probably be like over there, it's like maybe average 40. They're probably gonna go up to 60. So I'll move somewhere where it's already cold, so hopefully in a couple years it'll be warm. <laughs> I'd like to live in Hawaii, though. My grandma lives over there. Along with, like, the rest of my mom's family. Um, but everyone's just so nice. Mainly because, like, a lot of the commerce is tourist basically kind of good. Be nice to everybody, you know? Kind of have people come back for their vacations. But it's expensive. Expensive to live there. Like, we went grocery shopping with my grandma. The last time I was there was two years ago. Because it was when we went on the Japan trip. Um, mind you, I'm not rich. Um, I'm poor. My grandma's rich. Not rich, rich, but like she put her money into stocks and stuff at a young age. So she's like, she's set. Um, but like a gallon of milk, which is like maybe two, three bucks here, is like eight, ten dollars over there. It's like insane. Like, you gotta be rich just to live. And the moment wage is only like nine bucks. It's like, how are people not dying? Like, I don't get it. Um, I went to Hawaii in 08. So nice, yeah. It's really nice. What island did you go to? Um, I've only been to Oahu personally, because that's where my grandma is. And a lot of the other islands are really touristy. Um, I have a friend who lives on Maui, I think. Um, but yeah, I've only been to Oahu. I'd like to go to the other islands. Because we only really go for family stuff. Like, we used to go every four years. And by go, I mean my grandma would pay for the tickets. <laughs> and then we'd stay to her house. <laughs> so we never really did anything touristy, but we'd go to, like, the popular places, like, get Shave Ice. Aw, oh, dude. I wish there was more Shave Ice places here. 
I kind of like how just in general like bubble tea is like normalized or popularized now like there's so many bubble tea shops just around here not in my town specifically I know there's one in the mall um it's funny because there used to be a bubble tea spot in our downtown area and there's just one like a retail space in our downtown that's always rented out like it'll be like an independent business and then it'll fail and then six months later another business will be in that spot anyway and there was a bubble tea spot probably back in 08 so like like five, six seven years ago and i remember it wasn't that popular because <laughs> there's a lot of white people here <laughs> um, um and it's funny because they weren't as successful and then they added like one like arcade machine and then that brought more people in so they installed like five arcade machines in to get like the kiddos in and even then it wasn't successful it's kind of sad i think they're only in that spot for maybe a year year and a half maybe two years um but yeah i think because about a year ago it was actually cool because that spot was uh, rented out to like an art studio and i never went to it but they basically had like an open studio so you could access like all the art supplies they had available and they'd have like weekly classes and i really wanted to go to it because this had to be like two years ago when they opened the spot and i really wanted to go to it because i was like oh this seems cool but then like they were targeting like middle-aged people so no kids and at the time i was probably like 18 or 19. so i was like i don't want to hang out with old people i don't want to hang out with boomers Hmm. That's a, the concept was cool. Like they had alcohol. Granted, I couldn't have it then. <laughs> As you know, Megan's only had alcohol one time. Uh, but what was I gonna say? Yeah, they had an open studio, so they had table supplies you can paint or draw it. And it was open door, so you didn't necessarily have to pay to go in. But they sold art supplies in the store. I think they sold coffee or drinks. Yeah, they sold drinks. I said yeah. Um, but then that closed down. About a year ago, pre-pandemic, because it wasn't popular enough. I mean, how would you really make money? Well, only way you can really make money in that setup is if you have enough people to sign up for your studio classes. That they do. And then, right now, I think it's a bar. Or like a... Like a lounge bar, I think, now. But it's hard, because our downtown area, it's on a one-way road. Because um, it goes to the town. So, it's hard to find parking the commerce there and also if you're going through our town you you would just go you would drive straight through the downtown right because it's one way there's no real spot to like turn around i mean that's because they're trying to go with like the vintage theme because there's a lot of like antique boutique shops and it's kind of cringe um there was one time story time um, because I I have an Etsy shop. I try to disable it, but stuff is still listed. I probably can just disable my whole account. Um, but I put... Because there's a section to list it as, as a local business, right? So you put the town that you're delivering from. And then it'll show up in, like, search engines. And there's one person who DM'd me on Instagram... They were like, hey, your art is really cool. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you, man. That's cool. And then he was like, yeah, I checked out your Etsy shot. And it and it turns out I live in the same town as you. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, leaked. Um, so I was really freaked out. Because, like, um, I have the city that I live in on my Facebook that's only accessible to friends, right? Because I want my friends to know where I live. And I don't want strangers to know where I live. But th this individual was like, yeah, damn, got dogs. Yeah, I was so, like, freaked out, dude. So scared. And this person was like, yeah, I live, like, in the downtown area. I was like, she's like, where do you live? I was like, up the hill. Because <laughs> um, I was, like, freaked out, right? Because that implies that this person... At the time, I had my Etsy shop in my Instagram link. So they went to the website, right? Which, that's just one click. But then, I think it was... Up unnecessary for them to mention like hey i could live two blocks away from you like that seems really creepy right um because this person was mess messaging me about like they're just doing an artist trading card trade um 
Anyway, to me in my head, I'm thinking like maybe they're trying to imply that we can meet in person and I'll have to mail it. That seems kind of weird, right? Uh, based on my... Because this person didn't have any pictures on their account, I don't think. So I was like, uh-oh. Seems kind of sus. Um, anyway, I didn't trade with them because I was freaked out. Um, and then after that, I disabled my city listing on my Etsy because I was like, I don't want that to happen again. Like, that freaked me out. And I checked the chat log just because this happened a year ago, I think. Or maybe two years ago. Anyway, I checked my chat log recently and that account was deleted. <laughs> so I was like, this is kind of sus. Like, that's how you get human trafficked, you know? Crisis averted. Back to kids going on the internet. I think there should be... You need to teach your kids how to be safe on the internet. Like, just the... Like, your information can, can so easily be leaked. That's why, like, I'm really conscious of what pictures I post or any videos that I might post. Like, there's wackos out there that'll image trace, like, your location and it's scary. Like, I know a lot of streamers don't talk about it, but they get, like, swatted all the time. It's really sad that you're wasting... Like, you could potentially get jail time if you do that, right? And also, you're wasting your law enforcement time and effort. Like, that's where your tax dollars are going. Like, dumbasses wasting their time doing that. I hate them. Oh. Let's check in. I think it's looking pretty good from a distance. Because the camera is about a foot and a half away from the actual piece. I think it's looking good. I was ragging on it earlier, but I think it looks pretty tight. My sister's actually gonna be home soon, so she can actually critique it. Whenever I get so pissed off at her sometimes because I will ask her for t critiques on any project that I do. I'm like, "What do you think?" She's like, "It's okay, it's okay." I'm like, "Okay," because uh, a critique is giving um, positive feedback along with criticism, right? That's criticism, critique makes sense English language. Um, so I'll be like, what do you like about it? She's like, oh, I like this. What don't you like? I don't like that. Because I'm trying to get her in the habit of explaining her th thinking. It's funny because a lot of my art style is very similar to your abstract stuff. And she'll always be like, oh, I like the colors. And she's like, oh, I don't like that specific line. I'm like, okay. And she's getting a lot more specific with her critiques about certain elements, which is good. Because for the longest time, she'd be like, I don't like this. I'm like, why? She's like, I don't know, I don't like it. I'm just like, no, you need to explain yourself. You need to be able to communicate your thoughts, you know? Or like, if I don't like a food, I'm like, I don't like the texture, I don't like I don't like the way I eat it, or something like that, versus like, I don't like bean sprouts. It's like, why? I don't like it. It's like, no. Why don't you like it? Oh, I clipped. I clipped. Oh my god, it's 3 o'clock. <laughs> should go eat something. <laughs> People find it weird, but like, I could honestly eat breakfast food at any time of the day. Like, I loved when I was little. And like, my mom or dad would make pancakes for dinner. Aw. Oh, that was the best. Because like, it feels special, right? Because you're like... <gasps> I'm having breakfast food for dinner. Uh, but I love eggs. Eggs A tier. Also, history lesson. Um, it was mass um, uh, marketers or companies who popularized the idea of having eggs and bacon for breakfast. So that's just capitalism. That's why we eat it for breakfast. You'll, you've all been manipulated. Uh. Like, I could have eggs any time of the day. I really like making devil eggs. 
whenever I make them, I try and I make like little flowers inside the eggs with the the yolk mixture to make because I want to be artsy and cool. Yeah, but I really like runny eggs. I, I think it's funny how people will be like, don't eat raw cookie dough. But then they eat like, sunny set up eggs. It's like you're just, you're probably just as likely to get salmonella from either of those things. So, might as well just eat the cookie dough, you know? Oh. oh my god. Oh, it's so bad. Look at that leak. Press too hard. Oh, no. oh, it's fixable. It's fixable. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. Dude, I should just digital art. Just convert. It looks really good despite the material feather and like I said, yeah. Thank you, man. Um, as I said before, uh, t-shirt design, just in general. I can't see the feather regardless. Oh, you want to see it? I'll zoom in. Zoom in. <laughs> you can see here, like, the lines aren't as clean as it would be on paper. Which I find really upsetting because I, like, I love clean artwork. Like, clean away. That's my favorite thing. Uh, anyway, so t-shirt design really depends on, like, the silhouette or the shape of the design. Because no one's gonna be looking at your shirt, like, six inches away, right? Unless they're, like... I was gonna say something. <laughs> anyway, unless they're way too close, you know? But, um... So, really good design has a very distinguished shape. You have to also keep in mind color palette. And also, like, composition, right? Like, you can't just throw text on to a shirt and expect it to look good or you can't just throw like a poorly designed pattern onto it or like a designer shape like you have to take in consideration placement and also like how it fits on the body um so like from a distance right because a normal person is going to be maybe right now six feet away but a normal person is probably be like two three feet away from you right so with this specific design like as i said i have a mirror about 10 feet away from me like if i hold it up and look at it I can still see the pattern, right? It still stands out. But you can't see the feathering because it's way too far away. So I'm not too worried about it. Like, internally, I'm like screaming. But right now, it's okay. Well, okay. <laughs> when my sister gets home to critique this, she'll be like, I can see the feathering. And I'll be like, bitch, shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, because... I, I think I definitely like the feel of, of these paint pens on paper, like how I worked on yesterday. So that was my first time working with them on paper. I definitely liked how the paper didn't absorb as much of the ink as this freaking fabric is. There's probably a specific ink you would use for fabric. Yeah, I think it also comes down to the artist or creator is always going to be really critical of whatever they make. Because, like, they're always going to see, like, the little flaws. Unlike you, the consumer, who is only most likely going to see the final product, right? So you would see all the work once all the touch-ups are made, any adjustments, any edits. And unless you're really analyzing or critiquing your work, you're not going to look at everything in detail. So you're not going to see like the misstroke 
they made in the middle right side of the canvas, you know? I think... Because I've never really been to, like, a formal art gallery now that I think about it. I've, I've been to, like, our local art museum once or twice. Because the only time I went was for, like, a school field trip, so ages ago. Um, a lot of time, people don't spend a lot of time looking at your work, right? Especially on social media. They're gonna look at it for, like, two seconds and then keep swiping, right? Like, in a gallery, you're most likely there to look at it. So you're gonna spend, like, maybe, maybe 30 seconds to a minute looking at a piece. Versus you, the artist, you looked at it the five hours you spent to make it, right? So you're more conscious and aware of what you're doing or any mistakes you make. And also, the normal consumer doesn't create. So they don't they don't necessarily look for mistakes because they don't understand how they were made, maybe. Question, would you be mad if I changed it to, like, rock music? Because <laughs> that, that's honestly the kind of vibe I want to go for now. I'm in the mood. Angst, you may say. Mainly because I also want to work faster because I'm hungry. Because <laughs> now that I'm almost done, I want I want to get this done. Like, I know I say that I'd end, like, half an hour ago. But I'm just, like, so... I'm so close to getting done. Like, so close. If you don't want to switch music, then that's okay. We'll, we'll st keep with this EDM type stuff. I know you said you'd like the... <laughs> now nah, my friend unexpectedly invited me to play Apex, so I'm gonna go... Oh, not a problem, man. Okay, we're, we're going to angst, we're going to angst. I got permission. I got consent. We're changing. Let me just say, dedication, I appreciate you staying and playing, man. <laughs> I think it's also funny how people will diss gamers and they're like, you'll never go pro. You know, but then it's like, it's the pastime. It's like me making fun of you wanting to be a gardener when like you got four cactuses. You know, it's it's a pastime for you, right? Like it's not gonna be, a, not, not a serious, not serious isn't the right word, but not like, not something that you're fully like want to pursue, you know what I mean? Like, my first console I got, I said earlier, was a Wii. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't I was really exposed to gaming, like all the, other, all the other gamer frogs. So, like, my first shooter <laughs> was the Wii Play Sports, I think. So they had, like, a shooting minigame in it. Like, that was my first shooter. And there's, like, little five-year-olds playing Fortnite now. I don't get it. See, we're breeding pro gamers. Like, my high school, we had a a nerd club for Magic the Gathering, and my friend was the president. And it's funny because senior year was the first year they had like a tournament with other high schoolers to play Magic the Gathering, I think. And it was at one of the like spirit assemblies because I think my friend actually won or like someone from the club won that magic tournament and like they pulled him on this at in front of the like in this in the gym gym it was in the gym because that was the only place big enough to hold all the freaking students because our, our class size was huge like uh, 40 student classes you know gotta cram them all in one room 
Um, they pulled him and no one booed when he got called up, but everyone's like cringing. You know? It was funny. We, we all... <laughs> I know all our friends booed when he went up. <laughs> Just to meme with him. <laughs> but yeah. I'm talking really loud today. Like, I really hope it's not peaking. Yeah. Yeah, hey, we all memed on him. It was funny to make fun of the gamers, you know? And they were all such freaking nerds, like... They would play Magic. If you don't know, Magic the card game. Some nerd shit. They'd play during lunch. But, but like, it's funny now how, like... Gaming is actually cool. Like, you know, the cool kids in play play Madden. Like, it's interesting how the dynamic is changing. Like, there was one lunchtime where our vice principal sat down at the table and played magic with them, and we were like, Holy shit! <laughs> no, he's a nerd too! Because <laughs> he was telling us that he used to play magic when he was in high school. Granted, this guy was a young vice principal. He had to be like maybe late 30s, like really young. But I can't imagine what it's gotta be like to be a principal because you gotta deal with like the trouble kids you know you also gotta deal with like the shooter kids you know it's, it's crazy to think of like everything that teachers and just staff have to deal with now it's sad I need to have like a notification like a trigger warning like oh Get political. <laughs> I want to learn how to make sound bites. I think that'd be really fun. Cause I I really enjoy the H3 podcast. That's one of, definitely one of my favorite like creators on YouTube right now. Just H3 H3. I'm just how you meme all the time. It's great. But their main guy or one of the staff, he's so good with like the edits and the sound bits. They're really good. I also want to learn music production. I say all these things, but I'm probably not going to do it. Like, at some point, I'd like to produce music. Maybe... Let's see... Okay. I don't know, it might seem to be like picking up sound a bit more today. I don't know. I'm no techie.
maybe what I could do is figure out how to use the cricket and then print the abstract designs because it'll cut them out for me and then I iron them on. Maybe that's the way to go. But then it's also like you gotta get different colored vinyls. Maybe you can paint the vinyls, but then you gotta figure out which paint to use that'll be permanent. Maybe that's the approach. Because if these are gonna be mass produced, then you have to think about like how to make them. Because I see some really cool stuff being made with like the cricket. I don't understand how people can like stream for eight hours every day. To me, that's insane. Like people who like game all day, I can't do it. Like I play Animal Crossing for an hour and I get a headache. <laughs> um, and I guess you get, that's what it takes to be a pro. But also, just being able to talk for so long. That'd be so difficult. And also, whenever I do circular movements, it's picking up the fabric. So weird. This is why change is bad, kids. Don't know what's gonna happen. Stick with what you know. Loki kinda sad that Fall Out Boy hasn't released any music in a while. I mean, I know it's because Stump is a composer now, which is epic. Um, I really liked one of his songs that he released for, I think it was an indie film, called Deep Love. That song is really pretty. It's really bluesy. Really pretty. But, I miss it. 
Panic also not released anything new. Big sad. But. Uh, I really. Uh, no, let's not say that. Uh, I liked Twenty Pilots' new album. It was alright. Because I only recently got into top, like maybe three years ago. So I'm not, not a big stan. Like, not an OG fan. But, so my first album of theirs that I listened to was Trench. And that was a masterpiece. Just the composition as a whole, in terms of like the fluidity of the album, was great. I actually listened to that album on repeat on our Japan flight, which was 14 hours. Nope. 9 hours. Sorry. <laughs> I think on Australia it's 14 hours. But it was a 9 hour flight. And I listened to that on repeat on the flight. And it's really good. The Twenty Pilots new album was I was I. Some songs were good. I remember I listened to it when it launched, because it launched in the at midnight, so I listened to it. Um, 9 p.m. here, it was West Coast, baby, and the run time was only 33 minutes, and it ended. I was like, what? Because they released a couple of songs early. So, I basically listened to half the album already. But... I think, with a lot of new songs, it relies heavily on the composition. So, like, the beep boops, you know? The background elements. And... I mean, that's just because the... Means of production is so advanced now, right? I think there's definitely a less focus on lyricism, just in general. Like, people are making songs just to be popular, in terms of, like, getting on the radio and stuff. And I told myself, if I ever made music, I don't want to make stuff that I want to make, you know? Because I wanted to take vocal lessons. I think I said this yesterday. But, um, we used to have a vocal studio in our downtown area. And it was there for forever. Like, ever since I was little, it's always been there. And I've always wanted to, like, sign up for classes. Because they also did, like, instrument lessons, too. I know I wanted to sign up, but I was always too scared. Um, and at the beginning of 2020, I convinced myself, like, oh, I'm gonna take those vocal lessons, I wanna take salsa lessons, you know, I wanna be cool. Um, and I was gonna do it, but then, um, lockdowns, not lockdowns, but stay-at-home orders were in effect, so everything was closed. And unfortunately, that vocal studio closed down, um, last year. So, uh, the only closest studio right now is in Seattle, and wanting to commute back and forth there is too much. Too much. Too far away. There's people who commute to Seattle every day, and that's gonna be insane. Like, I can't picture myself spending an, spending an hour trying to work. Like, that's too much. Like, I worked at Subway, right? And there's one girl who would commute, like, 45 minutes to go to work every day. It's like, you're spending that long to go to work for entry level wage? Like, you're spending so much of your time. To me, I couldn't justify doing that. Because I live relatively close to work, because I don't have a vehicle. Um, so I would bike to work just about every day. That's also why I gained a lot of weight when I quit, because I didn't bike to work every day. <laughs> so... Yeah. But now I bike every morning, so... Hopefully I'll even out a little.
Almost done. Almost done. One more row on the top here. And then I'll end for today. So I went for way too long. <sighs> I actually want to try this on later today. And see what it looks like. Because the thing I don't really like about men's clothing on me is that like the pockets are a bit too low on my torso. Same thing with any pattern. It's a bit too low on me. Um. But it should be fine. I know my sister tends to wear, usually wear a lot more men's clothing because she likes to fit personally. Because she likes looser clothing. Last stroke. Done. All done. Finally. Six hours in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> cool. Just gonna close my pens before they leak everywhere. Hey. Yeah, from afar it looks pretty solid. Colors look almost kind of neon with this filter. Let's see what it looks like. True. Got the filter on. Yeah. Oh, looks brighter with that filter. Weird. Cool. So pocket is done. Um. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm gonna look into more, like, see what type of paint will work best. Um. And go from there. I'm gonna switch camera real quick. Oh my gosh, it is so hot right now. Face reveal? <laughs> God, this is my favorite meme. Okay. So I'm gonna let this one dry. From a distance, right there. Don't want to clip. Cool. So tomorrow, I'll work on figuring out what to do for the collar and the trim. Came out well. Yeah. Swell. Yeah, I think it came out pretty good. Um, I might want to touch up the lines a bit. Because the white is definitely not as opaque as I want it to be. But I kind of like how it's a bit more muted. Yeah, it looks pretty good from a distance. I think my sister hates it. I'll kill her. There we go. I won't, I promise. Do not. 
That is not a threat. It's a meme, okay? It's a meme. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it today. I went a lot longer, oh my gosh, than I wanted to. <laughs> I gotta hustle to get my work done today. Ooh. I gotta eat, eat something because I'm hella hungry. Okay. Yeah. So thank you to anyone who tuned in today. Thank you again, Yana, for coming in. OG. Um. Yeah, so I'll be back tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. PST. Probably either continue with these shirts or probably just doing another abstract type um, illustration. Let's see how this one looks from a distance. Looks like little circles. Cool. Yeah, so I'll be back tomorrow. Same time. Yeah. Whew, deep breaths. <laughs> okay. So I will be back then. Hope you have a great day. Bye. Yeah, thank you.